question about anything on practice test three. That was last night's homework. Bryce Acreage, thank you. Number two. Number which one? 2A. 2A? 2A, we actually talked about this kind of problem yesterday. We didn't talk about the exact problem yesterday, but we talked about that kind of problem yesterday. All right, so here we go. What kind of equation is 2A? It was hard. What kind of equation is 2A? It's quadratic. And how do we solve? How do we solve quadratic equations? Well, we got lots of options, right? What's my fallback? What am I going to do every time I'm confused by a quadratic equation? I'm going to do the quadratic formula. Now, do I have to do the quadratic formula? No. But rather than leave it blank, or waste a bunch of time on it, just use the quadratic formula. You're going to have a calculator for this test. So don't worry about the big numbers. 4x squared minus 27x minus 7. So one option, quadratic formula. What's A? 4. What's B? And C? All right, so here I go. X equals negative B, which would be positive 27, plus or minus the square root of 27 squared, oops, minus 4 times A times C, all over 2A. Okay? So here I go. I'm going to let my calculator help me. 27 plus or minus the square root of... 27 squared plus 4 times 4 times 7. I get a total under there of 841. Now be careful. What's going to happen to these two negatives? They're going to cancel, right? So I got 841 underneath my radical. Guess what? The square root of 841 is a number. Yeah, and, and it's always a number, but it's a nice number, right? It's 29. So now I can do my two answers, and I'm not going to have radicals or weird things, which I sometimes have, but not this time. 27 plus 29 over 8 is one answer, and 27 minus 29 over 8 is the other answer. All right, what's 27 plus 29? That is uh, uh, 56. 56. And 56 divided by 8 is? 7. seven. What's 27 minus 29? 2. Negative 2. Negative 2 over 8 Which is, is negative, uh, negative 1. Exactly. Now, if, <laughs> if you like to factor, this problem does factor, but I do not want you wasting a bunch of time figuring out how to factor it and then not getting the rest of the test done. It does factor. And what would these two answers be? Negative 1 fourth and positive 7, which is exactly what we got when we did it the other way. Wait, I, uh, okay, Bryce? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just know that I don't really like that. For the factory, can you just, it's just the, it's just the opposite. It's like x minus 7 would always be positive 7. All right, anybody else find something on the sheet that you feel like you really would like to talk about? Oh, um, <clears throat> Katie, can we do 2C just with all the fractions? 2C. Our strategy when we did 2C, or problems like 2C, was to get rid of the denominators. 
So to make that happen, we looked at all the fractions in the problem, and we said, what is the common denominator? It is not six. The common denominator would be 24. So we multiplied each piece of the problem by 24. Let me say that again. We multiplied each piece of the problem by 24. Now we did that, groupies, so that we could do this. Cancel. That's the whole purpose of doing it, is to have no more fractions. So 8 goes into 24 three times, leaving me here with 9x plus 3. Does everybody see that? Yep. Now what happens here? Eight. Cancels and leaves me with 8. Leaving me with, watch it now, negative 16x minus, minus 8. Equal to 48. What's 9x minus 16x? Negative 7x. And I have a mistake on the answer sheet on this problem. What's, I'm glad we're doing it to fix it. What's 3 minus 8? Five, negative negative five. 5. I have an 11 down there for some odd reason. I know. I know. I make mistakes too. 53? So x equals negative 53 sevenths. Uh, no, we want that as a fraction. Unless, the ones you can write, John, as uh, decimals are, like if it's seven halves, you can write three point five. But to write that one as a decimal, you have to round it off, and I don't want to round it off. Okay. And you do have the capability on your calculator to do that now. This problem will be you personally because you're special. That's what, this problem over here, that was, that was A? Yeah. Okay. What? <coughs> what am I supposed to call you? Jack. His first name is John, but he goes by Jack. Oh. That's fine. <laughs> Why did I do that? There's a first for everything. So. Because, like even in my grade book, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why I called you John. Well, because Jack and Judy um, comes from, it's a new thing for John. I know, but I don't know. I don't know. Cause I you know my Jack. name? I called Jack the other day. Yeah, that's true. Do you know my name? Different. <laughs> I said it on the radio. It was so funny. <laughs> I call you Jabron. I don't know yeah. what your name is. <laughs> actually, my mom, my mom actually told me the other day that it's actually because I'm named after like Quinn, Jabron, the poet, but it's actually pronounced Gabron. So my whole life is Jabron. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why I called you Jabron. Yeah, I don't know why I called you Jabron. Yeah, I don't know why I called you Jabron. Yeah, I don't know why I called you Jabron. Yeah, I don't know why I called you Jabron. Yeah, I don't know why I called you Jabron. Yeah, I don't know why I called you Jabron. Yeah, I don't know why I called you Jabron. Yeah, I don't know why I called you Jabron. Yeah, I don't know why I called you Jabron. Yeah, I don't know why I called you Jabron. Yeah, I don't know why I called you Jabron. Well, my birthday's Christmas, here's a fun fact about Mrs. Ford. My birthday's Christmas Eve, and my mom almost named me Holly. We have the same birthday. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Christmas Eve. Oh, cool. Who's that? This is my birthday. My mom always named me Holly because she thought that would be so cute for a Christmas baby. Holly Ford is cute. Okay. Anything else on practice test three now that we know facts about each other's notes? Anything else that we need to talk about in terms of the practice test? Did yesterday, did we do the projectile motion problem? Yeah, we did. Okay. Uh, you know what we haven't done in a long time? Let's do number five together. We haven't done an exponent problem in a long time. So let's do number five together. Just review those rules. <laughs> Pay attention, we want to get this right. Here we go. 
Well, how do you want to start this problem? Move the negatives. Move the negatives. Now, please notice the 8 and the 28 do not have negative exponents. So they are not moving. There is no exponent on these two numbers. They are not moving. This one, however, is going to have to come to the bottom. And this one is going to go to the top. This one is coming to the bottom. And what's happening to him? He's staying on the bottom. Why is he staying on the bottom? He's not negative. Now, how about 8 over 28? That reduces. Both of these are divisible by 4. How about having 10x's on top of 5x's? 5x's on the top. Think about what 10x's look like, you guys. 10x's look like x, 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 over 5 of them. Aren't they going to cancel and leave you with the extras up here on the top? Now look on the bottom. We've got 8y's and 3y's. How many y's do we have down there? 11. Kaylin, you chewing gum this morning? No, I'm not. Oh, thank God. Why, why are your jaws moving? Because I'm chewing on my nail. Your what? She chews she on her my finger. My nail. Okay. All right, so 2x to the 5th over 7y to the 11th is your answer. Everybody good with that? We haven't done one of those in a long time. Okay. All right, here's what I'd like you to do then. Oh, wait, let's do one more together. Let's do 4b. 4b. And then I'll let you work at your tables and get the sheet finished if you want. Okay? What's our strategy on this one? Katie Thomas, any clue here what the strategy is going to be to simplify this guy? Um, the eight and the two to simplify Here? Okay, no. This is the kind of problem, remember, that unless you can take it out of everything, you can't reduce. And Katie, I, I understand it is confusing. Would you guys listen for a minute? Katie's made a great point. She said, look, Mrs. Ford, you simplified the 8 and the 28 here. But you're telling me I can't simplify the 8 and the 2 here. And she's right. That's what I'm telling her. She can't do that. And she can't do it because of these. When there's a plus or a minus in the problem, you have to be able to cancel out of everything. Did you notice there's no adds or subtracts in this problem? When there's no adds or subtracts, cancel away. But if there are adds and subtracts, you have to be able to take it out of everything. Okay, so no, we're not going to start that way. So can you think of another way to start, Katie? Oh, it's a good thing we're doing this problem, huh? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Megan Linehan? Uh, multiply by the conjugate. And what is the conjugate for those that might have forgotten? 2 minus 3i. 2 minus 3i. All right, so let's make note of this, everybody. This is going to be a test question. You're going to have to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. So the conjugate of 2 plus 3i is 2 minus 3i. Now what do we do? Foil, foil, foil. We've got a lot of foiling to do. So I'm going to foil on the top. And I'm going to remember what does foil stand for? First. Outside, outside, loud. Outside. Inside. And last. And I'm just going to take my time and get it right. First, outside, inside, last. Then I do the same thing on the bottom. First, outside, inside, last. 
Now, here we go again. Katie, see all these adds and subtracts in here? Don't be canceling up and down. Now, you can combine like terms or whatever, like all these together, all these together, but no canceling up and down because of these pluses or minuses. All right, so what do we end up with? On the top, what's this? Negative, negative six, or excuse me, positive six I squared is? Negative six. Negative six. And it's negative six, gang, because we are going to memorize that I squared is negative one. When we see an I squared, we're going to immediately think of it as negative one. So 16 minus 6 is 10. 16 minus 6. And then these guys will make a negative 28i. Everybody still with me? Denominator. What is a negative 9i squared? 9. 9 plus 9. 4 plus 9 is 13. 13. What happens Cancel. to these guys? Cancel. On. There's my answer. Now, Katie Thomas, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but... I just want to point out, nothing cancels in this problem. If, though, it had come out to be this, then I could take a 2 out of everything, even though there's a minus in the problem, as long as I can take it out of everything, I can cancel. I just have to make sure I can take it out of everything. Okay? Here are ours. Those. So here's what I want you to do. You have three practice tests that need to be done, and you have a book assignment tonight that's posted online. So everybody in this room is going to be working on math, whatever you need to do. So if you need to finish practice test two, do that. If you all want to work together at your table on the book problems, do that. The other day I gave you the answers to the book problems. Looks like this, I gave those to you. So you can do those.